Hi everyone, welcome to What's Up Wednesday Recharge. We're so happy that you could all join us. We are gathering for the last time at this time frame because we are entering Holy Week. We hope you can join us this Sunday for Palm Sunday, next Thursday for Monday Thursday, Good Friday, and then of course, Easter morning. We look forward to all of you joining us for all of those worship services. And then, starting the Wednesday after Easter, we're going to continue with What's Up Wednesday Recharge, but it's going to look a little different. Kids, this is for you. We're going to start What's Up Wednesday for Kids Zoom. At 6.30 on Wednesday night, starting the Wednesday after Easter, kids can join me for a Zoom call. Tell your families to watch email for the link to connect to the Zoom call. We're so excited and can't wait. And for the grown-ups, we're going to start What's Up Wednesday Recharge Live at 5. That's right, What's Up Wednesday Recharge Live at 5, starting the Wednesday after Easter. We look forward to all of you joining us for those times. Thank you, everyone. Tonight, we're going to revisit Acts 9 in the story of Saul being called by God to be an apostle. And then Ananias, who is also called by God to be an emissary of hope and encouragement to Saul. You know, there's many times that we are asked by God to be set aside, to take the necessary time and to think about who God is and to look in the mirror and see ourselves. And then there's times in your life and in my life where God is asking us to step up and to be a source of encouragement for someone. It just reminds me that all through my life, I've had times where God has had to chisel me. And what I mean by that is that God has had to work on my heart and my spirit so that I look a little bit more like Jesus when I submit to God's good work. Sometimes that chiseling takes the form of God convicting me of things that I'm doing or attitudes that I have that I really need to let go of. And other times... What it means is that God is asking me to see myself as he sees me. I have to tell you, that's a hard one for me. I'm so hard on myself. It's hard for me to understand that God loves me just the way I am. And so I'd like to share with you a powerful, powerful video. It's called Chisel. And Skit Guys Productions has put this video out. And so I'm going to ask that you just get yourself settled and, and get someplace comfortable and and just watch this video, and I'll join you after the video. Ephesians 2.10 says that we are God's workmanship, his masterpiece. I don't know about you, but when I get up in the morning and look in the mirror, I don't really see a, a masterpiece, you know? I mean, maybe a Picasso. It's like, <laughs> but I want to be his masterpiece. I want to be everything he created me to be. And so I go to him in prayer, and I say, Dear Heavenly Father, do whatever it takes to mold me into the image of your Son. Make me your masterpiece. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Hi. Whoa. Who are you? I'm God. You said the prayer, so here I am. You're not God. No, I am. You said the prayer. That's how it works. Okay, okay. If you're God, then uh, make it snow in here. You know what? I really don't want to make it snow in here because it'd get kind of yucky. Yeah, you're not God. Why do you say that? God wouldn't say yucky. I do. It's a Greek word. Oh. Okay, okay. Um, if you're God, what does Lamentations 15.9 say? Lamentations is only five chapters. It's a very short book. Oh. Why was it so short? I was tired of lamenting. Oh. Okay, okay. If you're God, who's going to win the World Series this year? I'm really not into playing games. Why are you so much into playing games? You are God. What well, gave it away? You answered my question with a question. I did? <sighs> yeah, I do that, don't I? I did it again. <laughs> Step right up, here we go. Okay. All right. Hey, what are we doing? I'm gonna make you my original masterpiece. This is the process. Oh, okay, got it. Yeah. Wait, wait, what are these about? These are the tools I'm gonna use to make you into my original masterpiece. Okay. Yeah. Hang on. Yeah. I thought you were a carpenter. That's my son. Step right up, here we go. Okay. Oh, hey God. Mm -hmm. How do you know what to chisel away and what to leave? 
I take out everything in your life that doesn't belong there, kind of like dead weight. Ooh, speaking of dead weight, could you chisel right here? It showed up when I was in my 20s and grew around and became back fat. I don't even know why you created that, but I can't get rid of it. I mean, I've tried everything. Like, I tried running, I tried lifting weights. My wife actually talked me into trying Pilates. That was awkward but I can't get rid of it. So if you would just chisel around here and then, you know what, if you chisel a line right here and maybe four to five, maybe eight lines right here, that would be awesome. You're funny. You made me that way. I also made the platypus. But the platypus. All I'm saying is most of my children, when it comes to this process, they just want to talk, but they don't want to do the work. So do you want to talk or can I chisel? Talk, chisel, No, talk, no, chisel. no, 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 I choose to chisel. All right. Through my Holy Spirit, I'm going to bring up things in your life that I want you to work on. Like your anger. Mm. I created the emotion, but you use it in the wrong way. Um, you compare yourself to others instead of me. Mm. You tell little white lies because you want to people please. Mm. You're lazy. But you try to fool everybody by looking really, really busy. You have a problem with lust? Well, time out. <laughs> I don't really have a problem with lust. You don't have a problem with lust. No, I can do it anytime I want. <sighs> Hang on a second. I mean, I, I gotta admit, I, mean, I feel like you've been doing some great work and I'm looking pretty good right now. All right, when you look in the mirror, who do you see? I see me. Okay, then I need to keep chiseling away because ultimately you and other people need to see my son. Okay, don't misunderstand me. It's just um, when I look more like Jesus, people get uncomfortable around me. I mean, even my church friends, and they're like, oh, you're holier than thou, you know? And, and I, don't, I don't think I'm supposed to make people uncomfortable. So what you're saying is you'd rather play God in certain areas of your life than for me to be God over your whole life. That is not what I said. It's what you meant. Yes, it is. Um, it's hard to talk to you. You know everything that I'm thinking. I'm just saying you've done some great work. Maybe we take a break, a sabbatical from each other, you know. I'll stay right here and then, you That's know. That's just it. You never just stay right there. You're either moving toward me or away from me, but never you just stay. What you're doing is called control. Do you want to control things or life or can I chisel? Control, chisel, control, no, chisel. No, chisel, chisel. All right. But can we chisel where I want? That's called control. Oh, okay, I'm sorry. Now this right here, this secret sin that you keep running to whenever you're hurting, angry, lonely, tired, that you think you're fooling everybody, but it's making you a whitewashed tomb. Are you ready for me to chisel this out of your life? Yeah. See, it's a process. It's not a sprint, it's a marathon. It's your whole life. And you care so deeply about what other people think of you. It's rubbish, it's garbage. The greatest thing you're ever gonna hear is at the end of your life, when you hear me say, well done, good and faithful servant, that's what you keep your eye on. That's the prize, heavenward. Oh, that hurts. Oh, trust me, this hurts me more than it hurts you. Right. Okay, I'm sorry. I just, I don't think you understand this pain. Pardon me? You're asking me to sacrifice a lot, God. Don't talk to me about sacrifice. I know all about sacrifice. I sent my son to die on the cross for pain, for sin, but I also did it for another reason, to give you freedom. Do you know what insanity is? Insanity is doing the same thing over and over and over again, expecting different results. And there are things that you've been doing for years. These empty wells that don't have anything to offer. You've been going to them and it's insane. Allow me to chisel them out of your life. Um, allow me to produce character when you keep focusing so much on your image. Okay, but I was thinking. Your thoughts are not my thoughts. Okay, but if we went another way. Your ways are not oh, my ways. Oh, I can't. You can't what? I, I, I can't be good. That's your excuse. That's your excuse is that you can't be good. It's not an excuse. I can't. Oh, my child. In the beginning, I said it was good. I made you good. Be good. Yeah, but you and I both... What? Nothing. No, what is it? Nothing, okay? You wouldn't understand. I, God of all the universe, wouldn't understand something one of my children has to say. Try me. It's just, um, I let you down so many times, God. No, my child. You were never holding me up. 
I hold you up with my victorious, righteous right hand. Never the other way around. In this relationship, I hold you up. Okay. Chisel away. Just, just be prepared for what you're going to find in there. Because I know who's inside there. Because I get up every morning and I look at him in the mirror. And I hate who I see. Because deep inside there, this, this, this little kid who gets up every morning and dresses like an adult. And I go out and I, and I try to do what I'm supposed to do, but I can't, okay? I can't be who everybody else expects me to be. God, I can't even be who I want to be, much less who you created me to be. And so inside is this scared, stupid little kid. But you chisel away. Just be prepared. You have listened to so many voices for far too long that were not for me. And you have totally bought into the lie, haven't you? You think you're junk, don't you? When you lay your head down at night after you've done the dance to get the hug, you think you're junk. Listen to me. I don't take time to make junk. How can I show you that my love for you stretches as far as the east to the west? That how can I show you that my love for you has no end? I know. Reach in your back pocket. What? Reach in your back pocket. Why? Are you arguing with me? Reach in your back pocket. Oh, God. Yes? I just meant, God, I'll do that right now. You are just saying my name in vain. Come on. It's, it's a name. It's a saying. It's a name above all names. It's more than a saying. It's more than a name. I want to teach you something about my name. Reach in your back pocket. Oh my God. You know what that is? Yeah, it's a, uh, it's a note. I, I wrote it when I was in college. How did you get this? Hello? Oh yeah. Go ahead, read it. I love Angie. Other side. Sorry. Dear God. Did I hear you right today? Did I hear you say that you love me? Even though you and I both know I've messed up so many times. Did I hear you say you want to use me? And I feel so useless. If you'll take me, then use me then. God, I give you all that I am. Take me. I love you, God. I love you too. And I love you too much just to leave you where you're at. This salvation that you hold, I don't want it to be some sentimental gush or some head knowledge. I want you to work it out in every detail of your life. And when problems come and chaos happens, don't look at it as a, as a prison but look at it as a father disciplines his child. A father disciplines the ones he loves. I know, but it's going to be tough. Yes, but you bought into the lie thinking everything was going to be easy when you gave everything over to me. There will be trouble in this world, but be of good cheer. I've overcome the world. I want you to do something. I want you to look out there and I want you to say, Tommy is God's original masterpiece. Tommy is God's. No, not the way you see yourself or you try so desperately for others to see you, but maybe for the first time in your life, the way I see you, the way I created you. Tommy is God's original masterpiece. Yes, you are. And so are you. God doesn't make junk. You are an original masterpiece. Friends, how is God aching to chisel you? As you and I prepare for the events of Holy Week, of thinking and understanding about the sacrifice of Jesus on the cross. How is God asking you for your attention? 
Are there areas in your life that you need to come to grips with, that you need to surrender to God and, and be willing to ask God, against my very will, please chisel these thoughts, these actions, these attitudes, chisel them out of my heart. As you begin to contemplate Holy Week, I would ask you, God wants to chisel you but he wants to chisel you out of love. God is not a vengeful, punishment-seeking God. God is a loving God. And if he chisels, it's so that you would look more like Jesus and that you would see how much Jesus loves you. So chisel away, God. I'm sure there's lots of areas in my life to be chiseled. Let's pray together. Oh God, we submit to you right now, right in the comfort of our own home, in the safety of our own home, that there are places in our lives, we have lifestyles, we have attitudes, we have habits that are unholy. We want, we want the courage to just give them to you and allow you to take up the hammer and the chisel and to work in our lives that we would be more like Jesus. And God, we thank you so much that you love us just the way we are, that you do this chiseling out of sheer love for us. And so here we are. Chisel away, O oh God, that come Easter Sunday, we can stand as resurrected people and that we can live always only for you, Jesus. Amen.